Hello, everyone. Welcome to One Civil Law, where we learn through the misfortunes of others. If you're enjoying our legal education content, please remember to subscribe. For today's edition of Capital Riots, we have episode number 28, the twin stories of Mr. Pepe and Mr. Pizzola. And we're going to learn about these twin stories, and also we're going to read the indictment that has been filed against them both. What prizes have our contestants won? Well, let's find out. And we will start with Mr. Pepe, because his is a shorter st st story from the FBI. So William Joseph Pepe was photographed inside the United States Capitol during the events that transpired the afternoon of January the 6th of 2021. The photograph was displayed to the public from various media outlets. After the photograph was displayed for the public, Pepe was identified as an employee of the Metro Transit Authority. That would be the Metro of New York, like the subway system. The MTA's investigation revealed that Pepe used his sick leave for January the 6th in order to travel to Washington, D.C. for the aforementioned events. MTA then suspended Pepe. I, I do like, I, I mean, it doesn't, it's not completely surprising that someone claims sick leave instead of vacation leave, but he wasn't so much feeling sick that day as he wanted to go down to D.C. and, I don't know, get down with the sickness, maybe? I, I don't, I don't know how to finish that sentence, but that's what he decided to do with his day. The photograph of Pepe during the events of January the 6th can be found at, found at the following URL, and then we have a nice picture of it with him there in his black leather coat, I don't know, an American flag bandana and mustache, at least he doesn't have a beard, and slick back hair, and a little overbite thing he's got going on. Let's see if we can do it. It's close enough. Yeah, and he's holding his cell phone, taking a little selfie. Good times. The Federal Bureau of Investigation at the New York field office confirmed through the Metro service task officer that Pepe was in fact an employee of the Metropolitan of the Metro service and that Pepe had used sick leave for the day that Pepe was photographed in the United States Capitol. I got better. Further, Pepe was identified by an MTA employee using the photograph in the statement of facts. Pepe is an MTA employee assigned to the mechanical department of labor in the Brewster yard in New York. MTA provided the following photo of Mr. Pepe. All right, so that's the that's all we have for Mr. Pepe. It was very short for Mr. Pepe. So let's switch stories and talk about Mr. Pizzola, who has a, a longer, more interesting story. Mr. Pizzola, what is his story? On January the 8th of 2021, <laughs> Theresa, Minnesota gives me $9.99. Uncle, uncivil law, do you think the writers had simply taken Halo Beauty? This could have all been avoided. Well, you know, I feel that if you're feeling sick, it means that you have just not taken the vitamins that you need to really feel refreshed and vital and have that can-do spirit. So if you're feeling a little under the weather, feeling a little challenged, might I recommend the wonderful supplementary products of Halo Beauty. Halo Beauty will keep you out of the Capitol and prevent you from rioting. On January 8th of 2021, the FBI received a lead depicting publicly available photographs and videos of an unknown individual breaking a window of the U.S. Capitol building, which is located in Washington, D.C., with a clear plastic shield and then entering the building. According to the time and date stamp, this occurred on January the 6th at approximately 2.39 p.m. Below are screenshots from one such video. In the video, soon after the glass is broken, an unidentified individual can be heard ye yelling the words to the effect of, go, go, go. The individual with the shield is depicted in the video as entering the Capitol building while still holding the shield. The screenshot on the left shows an individual breaking the window, and screenshot on the right, which is taken seconds after the other one, shows his face. So on the left, we see him breaking the window. On the right, we see him face of him, the guy who broke the windows. A review of open source photographs also revealed photographs of a person who appears to be the same individual who wielded the shield in the video referenced above 
at, at a Make America Great Again rally, which occurred in Washington, D.C. on or about December the 12th of 2020. In one of those photographs, the individual who appears similar to the individual who broke the Capitol window with his shield was wearing a black short-sleeved t-shirt with yellow, consistent with a Proud Boys logo. He got the Bumblebee branding logo. In another picture from the mega rally, also available on open source, the individual is wearing a t-shirt with a logo consistent with the United States Marine Corps. Depicted standing next to this individual in the same photograph is another person wearing a helmet bearing what appears to be the logo for the Proud Boys. Another video posted on social media shows that someone, who appears to be the same individual that broke into the window of the Capitol with a shield, smoking a cigar inside the Capitol building, smoking indoors inside a federal building. <coughs> That's a no-no, ma'am. You can't smoke indoors of a federal building. In the video, the individual states the words to the effect of, Victory smoke in the Capitol, boys. This is effing awesome. I knew we could take the mf -er over if we just tried hard enough. Might I respectfully suggest to Mr. Pizzola, he didn't exactly try hard enough. He, 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 he could have, he might have taken it in some sense, but he couldn't really hold it now, did he? Try harder next time, I guess. A screenshot from that video is contained below. We see him with his smug, stupid, bearded face with a, with hair that looks like it hasn't been cut in ever with the with 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 a fag in his mouth the fbi has spoken to an individual the fbi will refer to as witness number one for the purpose of this affidavit the witness stated that the witness was in washington dc during the protest that occurred the witness stated that after the events of the capitol as described above they spoke to an individual he or she knew to be spaz along other individuals the witness stated during the conversation spaz began bragging about the windows to the Capitol and entering the building. In a subsequent interview, the witness clarified that Spaz said that he used a Capitol sh police shield to break into the window. The witness stated that Spaz can be seen on the cover of many newspapers and recognizes him from those photographs. He got his publicity. He, got, he made the papers, man. The witness stated that other members of the group talked about the things they had done during the day and said that anyone they got their heads on would have killed including Nancy Pelosi. Really, that's interesting. So all these guys who are together said that they would have killed anyone they managed to get their heads on. I wonder if that might show, that might be a t that might show intent to kill. I wonder therefore if these acts might compromise attempted murder. Right? Now you might be thinking to yourself, Kurt, they weren't near any of the people. You they weren't really near any of the, the people. How can it be attempted murder? Ah, oh, my friends, let's discuss what let's discuss what compromise as comprom compromises an attempt, right? So first of all, we have to have the intent to do the underlying thing. So that's element one. So attempted fill in the blank. You have to have in the intent to do the fill in the blank. So whether it's attempted murder, attempted robbery, attempted whatever, right? You have to have the intent to do that thing. So you can't like, you know, bungle into it or do it some other way. It has to be your goal and purpose, right? And then for the attempted element of it, you have to have a substantial step in furtherance of that. Now, there is many wonderful line drawing questions of what exactly is a substantial step? And that's one of the questions that lawyers get paid for so very, very much, because then we get to have wonderful arguments. Like if I'm going to shoot, if, if I'm, if I'm intending to shoot at a person and I shoot the person, but I miss, well, that's attempt. Well, what if I just make it as far as pulling out the gun, but someone tackles me. Eh, that's attempt. What if someone knows I have a gun on me and they put they they uh, tackle me before I ever get the gun out? Eh, that's attempt too. What if someone finds me on the way there? Like maybe a cop pulls me over in my car, and somehow they find out because you know I'm the talkative sort. Not that that would ever happen, as we've learned from all these wonderful FBI T hours. So I just tell the officer, "Yeah, I'm on my way to kill somebody." Because, you know, yeah. Is that attempt? Probably. Probably. So when when does when exactly does it stop the planning and preparation stage? And when exactly does it enter the uh, substantial step phase of it? Like, we can have arguments over that. In fact, this would be a great case for such an argument. But we know that he had the intent to kill because he said so. 
And he's taken some substantial steps along those lines, one might argue. So if we're being really, if we're being really dickish, we could go for attempted murder, even though he never got anywhere near the congressperson. That could be fun. That'd be a hard reach. But it's worth thinking about. It's the worst least thinking about. You know, it's it's a hard it's a hard reach because it's hard to sell a jury on. That's the real problem at the end of the day. That's why it's hard. Because if if you if the guy shoots but misses, the jury's gonna say, yeah. If he merely has the gun out but doesn't shoot, yeah. If they if he gets pulled over by the cop on the way there, probably. But if you're too attenuated down the path, even if in some legal sense it qualifies, will you really be able to get a jury to sold on this? Now, that being said, however, it is a jury in Washington, D.C. And the, 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 the D.C. did vote like 93% for Democrat. So, you think about it, maybe. Maybe. You could try. Eh. Eh. The witness further stated that some members of the group, which included Spaz, said that they would have killed Vice President Mike Pence if given the chance. Further statements of intent. According to the witness, the group said it would be returning on the 20th, which the FBI believes to be to mean the presidential inauguration scheduled for the 20th. And they plan to kill every MF or their can. The witness stated the men said they all had firearms or access to firearms. I wonder if they brought it with them by any chance. According to the FBI's write-up of the witness's initial interview, the witness provided telephone number for Spaz, which the FBI puts in a footnote because apparently the FBI wrote it down wrong. So the FBI does make mistakes. So they wrote down 7260, but they meant 7262. And the FBI apologizes to the court for screwing that one up. It's okay, FBI. It's a, it's a slight mistake. It's, it's fine. The witness identified the individual with the gray beard in the photograph below as Spaz. That would be Mr. Uh, Pizzoli over here, who goes by Spaz, apparently. The FBI notes that the photograph appears to have been taken inside the U.S. Capitol, and that the individual identified as Spaz is carrying what appears to be a clear plastic spell shield, similar in appearance to the one used to break out the window of the Capitol. And then we got the, the image that I'm using for the thumbnail over here, which is super exciting. The FBI has also spoken to an individual referred to the parents for the purposes of this affidavit as witness number two. This second witness told the FBI that the second witness has known Pizzola or Spaz for years, including a period of time where he goes by Spaz, by the way. That's not an insult. He goes by that. It's a name. It's a nickname he likes. So before someone gets upset that I'm calling him Spaz, he calls himself Spaz. It's in the affidavits. So, yeah. Anyways. The witness number two was shown a, a portion of above photograph that included only individual with a gray beard, along with another ver version of the above photograph that was cropped to include visible faces. The witness stated that the person with the gray beard depicted in the photograph shown to him or her was the individual he show knows as Dominique Pizzola and, and Spaz. On January the 9th, the FBI obtained the New York Department of State driver's license photo for Pizzazz or, pa or Spaz. And here is a copy of his photograph. I don't know, man. Yeah, let's see. On January the 9th of 2021, the FBI located a publicly available Telegram account, username of King Behavior. The profile listed a display name of Spaz O Second Degree. The bio stated Marine Vet, Boxer, Patriot, Proud Boy, Second Degree. So he's a Marine Vet. That might mean we get some UCMJ prizes, maybe. We can think about it. I don't know if the UCMJ is going to get involved or not on this. I feel like the U.S. attorney is going to have just too much fun. I feel like the U.S. attorney wants all of it. So he might tell this. He, he might tell the UC. He might tell the military courts to stuff it. <laughs> we'll find out. Maybe they'll have a fight amongst themselves. Who gets who gets the fight? Anyways, further FBI checks established that Pizzola, with the same date of birth in 1977 is listed is the registered L uh, telephone number of 7262 which you know we wrote down with a zero but that was our bad according to information provided by Ver by Verizon Pozzola is the subscriber of this number open source database queries list the likely telephone number 
link to the tele to, to link to the Telegram account with the username and display name of Spazzo. So could be the same account. For the conclusion, we think that he might have violated some various laws. Okay, and then declared under penalty of perjury, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, that's what the FBI thinks our, our twin friends have committed crimes for. So what does the grand jury think the crimes are? Well, I'm so glad you asked. We have United States of America versus Dominique Pizzola, also known as Spaz, also known as Spazzo, also known as Spazzolini. He goes by Spazzolini and William Pepe. We'd like to charge them with conspiracy, assaulting an officer, civil disorder, government theft of government property, obstruction of proceedings, robbery of personal property, entering restricted buildings, and aiding and abetting crimes. Sounds like fun. Sounds like fun. Yeah, Matthew, it is a double jeopardy problem. That's why they're going to have to have a fight about it. All right, so the uh, indictment lays out the basic charges, background, and, you know, all the stuff we see, who the Proud Boys are, the defendant. He Apparently at his home, he, ha he has a tactical vest. There's a conspiracy. All right, so from at least as early as January the 6th and continuing through January the 6th, in the District of Columbia and elsewhere, the defendants, Pizzola and Pepe, did knowingly combine, conspire, confederate, and agree with each other and others known and unknown to the grand jury to commit offenses against the United States, namely to obstruct, influence, impede, and interfere with law enforcement officers engaged in official duties during the commission of a civil disorder, and in doing so, obstruct, delay, and adversely affect the performance of those functions in violation of 18 U.S.C. 231. Let's look that up and see what that what what that looks like. What is the penalty for 18 U.S.C. 231? Let's take a look. Five years. Okay. So that's a five-year potential prize. That's nice to know. The object of the conspiracy was to obstruct, influence, impede, and interfere with law enforcement officers engaged in their duties. The conspiracy was carried out through the following manner and means, among other means. Pizzola and Pepe and others known and unknown took action to evade and render ineffective the protective equipment deployed by the police in active riot control measures, including actions to remove temporary metal bar barricades erected by the police for the purpose of controlling access and stealing and purloning of property belonging to the police. That would namely be the shield, by the way, in case you're wondering what property. The riot shield, that would be the property. So, there you go. Overt acts. What overt acts do we have? Well, where do you want to start? On or about January 5th through the 6th, Pizzola, Pepe, and other individuals affiliated with the Proud Boys, whose, individual, whose identities are known and unknown to the grand jury, traveled in interstate commerce to Washington, D.C. from different locations and arranged to meet in D.C. On the 6th, Pizzola and Pepe and other individuals affiliated with the Proud Boys, whose identities are known and unknown, assembled on the mall. Individuals known and unknown, including Pizzola and Pepe, traveled to the Northwest Pedestrian Entrance. An organizer led the group to the pedestrian entrance saying, F Antifa and we love Trump. Members of the group described in this who are unknown to the grand jury toppled over metal barriers. Members of the group who are unknown to the grand jury assaulted members of the Capitol Police. Members of the group who are unknown, known and unknown, walked along the pathway that ran from the northwest entrance to the Capitol ground. Pezzola and Pepe were among these individuals leading the group, which included many people from the Proud Boys, and Pezzola and Pepe walked in close proximity to another. Upon reaching the police barricades that had been erected at the entrance, they removed the barricade. Shortly thereafter, Pizzola confronts a Capitol Police officer attempting to control the crowd and rips away his riot shield while the officer physically engaged with another individual. So, that sounds promising. On or aboard about January the 6th, Matthew, if you're going to cite something, you know, you want to cite something a little bit more serious than that, man. 
Um, but yeah. When you say gamble versus United States as a military is in double jeopardy, I, I'll have to look it up. Maybe it's not. Okay, account two. They aided and abetted Pizzola and others known and unknown, hindered the ability of the Capitol Police to control access. Impede with operations, civil disorder. That's five years. Count three. Stealing the riot shield that was property in the United States while that riot shield was being used by the Capitol Police officer. 231. Five years. Count four. Uh, Pizzola by force and violence and by putting in fear did steal and take away the riot shield. 18 USC 2112. That's a new one. Let's see, 18 U.S.C. 2112. 15 years. And this is robbery. 18 U.S.C. 2112. Personal property of the United States. Whoever robs or attempts to rob another of any kind or description of personal property belonging to the United States shall be imprisoned not more than 15 years. Yeah, this is property of the United States. This is, this is personal property of the United States. It's a riot shield. It's property of the United States. It was robbed from the police officer, taken from his hand. Sounds right. So robbery. 15 years for the robbery. That's good news. That's a fun charge. Count five. Pizzola with intent to commit a felony. That is the robbery. Did forcibly assault uh, or oppose anyone. Assaulting an officer in violation of 1111. Well, let's see. What does that imply? That would again be ripping the riot shield. So ripping the riot shield is robbery. It's also assault. So that's nice. So this is 111A1. Forcibly, whoever forcibly assaults, resists, opposes, impedes, intimidates, or interferes with a person while engaged in the for proper duties. Okay, where such acts involve physical contact with the victim of that assault or the intent to commit another felony, eight years. So there's an eight-year penalty for that. Good times. Count six. Pizzola moved from the Western Passable to the balcony, taking the riot shield with him that was property of the United States. Used the riot shield as property of the United States to break a window. Destruction of government property, 1361, for breaking the window. What is that charge? Uh, 10 years. Count seven, obstruction of an official proceeding by in, by in, by in, uh, impeding an official operation 1512 20 years in the case of threat of use of physical force the use or attempted use of physical force against a person, so 30 years, because this is physical force against another person. That would be the officer. Again, taking taking it from him is robbery. It's also force against the person. So that's 30 years. So that's fun. So that's that's a nice little bonus time there for that charge. Uh, entering the grounds. I believe that's a year and I can't be bothered to look it up. For knowingly entering, disrupting business, I believe that's a year and I can't be bothered to look it up. Engaging in physical violence on the grounds. Okay. 1752. Let's take a look at that one. Let's see. Hmm. 
Well, let's see. The fine of imprisonment of not 10 years if the person during and relation to defense uses or carries a deadly or dangerous weapon. Does the shield count as a deadly or dangerous weapon? Probably. So 10 years. Otherwise, one year. So I'm not sure about that one, but we can find out later. Count 11. Uh, civil disorder, I believe. Yeah, that's five years. And that's a true deal. So true bill. So that's what our friends are looking at. So they're looking at uh, 30 years potentially. And of course, we have to we have to adjust all that by the uh, guidelines uh, for the sentencing guidelines. So of course, they won't get that much time. You'd be more realistically looking at, you know, something like less than five years, assuming conviction, all, all of them. But did the window cost more than $1,000? Probably. Yeah, if I had to bet. Well, you not just the window proper, but any sort of damage to the frame and stuff. Yeah, probably thousand dollars. Thousand dollars doesn't seem completely unreasonable for those windows. Maybe not, but we'll find out. But yeah, these are possibilities. So yeah, so that's what's going on. Surprise! There's no burglary entering without authorization with intent to commit a felony. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, so we're that's what we've got so far. So yeah, these guys are facing maybe thirty years maybe less. So there's some pretty serious charges there for our, for our Pepe the Frog and uh, Pizzola over here. So I hope you enjoyed this edition. Uh, yeah, David Beeman says all they're going to be dismissed. I don't think that's very likely. Uh, we seem to have some pretty decent evidence for some of these charges. So where are they going to be imprisoned? Oh, that's up to the Bureau of Prisons. Could be anywhere. So it'd be federal prison. That's up to the Bureau of Prisons where? So I don't know. Alaska, maybe. Whatever. Um, yeah, once it's up to the Bureau of Prisons in terms of where. I mean, actually, realistically, probably New York. If I had to, if you were a betting man, you know, because it would be closer to their family. So all else being equal, you would expect the prison to be the one that's closer to the family. So probably a federal prison in New York if you were taking get bets. That'd be the most logical thing. But it's up to the Bureau of Prisons. It's just a pure administrative matter. How much can all the riders be seen as a single group? I don't know. That's that's one of those that's one of those questions. Leavenworth, if the military gets involved, maybe, but unlikely. I don't know if the military will get involved or not. We'll see. Yeah, your security front door is five thousand dollars. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, so is that a thousand dollars worth of damage? Plausible. Yeah, yeah, probably federal prison in New York. <laughs> that would be the most logical thing. Did I watch the video I told you about? No, I'm sorry. I'm not sure which video you're referring to, David. I've been busy. But anyways, I'm going to sign off for now. If you're enjoying this content, please watch it or please give it a like. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. Until later, my friends, cheers, peace, and goodbye.